Good afternoon, my name is Chris Kunzelman. I'm a principal architect with Advisex. Um, I'm gonna talk to you today about IT automation. A couple of discussion topics for this presentation. Um, the Advisex approach to IT automation first, and then I'll go into our IT automation conceptual architecture. And then lastly, discuss a little bit about how we drive business value for IT automation. The Advisex approach starts uh, with a modernize phase, then automate, then transform. So we call that MAT. And during the phases of modernize, automate, and transform, companies typically from an IT perspective are talking, starting at the technology focus area. And as they move further up towards the transform phase, they become more business focused in terms of further enabling business agility. We'll go into some of that in more detail in the coming slides. The modernized phase is laying the foundation for successful automation. It enables the software-defined data center or the software-defined enterprise where virtualization becomes a very important aspect of the technology capabilities. It also looks at um, how how does the IT organization leverage cloud and are they ready for the cloud? What is their cloud strategy? And then lastly, the IT focus is around improving its processes and maturity so that it can become more of a cloud, cloud-like provider to its business customer. The modernized phase is really more focused on building the capabilities from a technology perspective that will further enable automation and transformation. At the automate phase, the IT organization has already modernized and they're in the process of building out the capability to deliver services via self-service and automation that would take the, the time to deliver from months to minutes. Um, through automation, the ability to standardize what is being delivered um, from an infrastructure standpoint, which will help uh, establish that consistency in the way that servers and infrastructure components are deployed, um, reducing human intervention and potential for, for um, uh, mistakes to be made during the deployment of infrastructure. Um, enterprise scalability is the result of automation. And we'll talk a little bit about more, more about that in some of the coming slides. At the transformation stage, the focus of IT is in um, being able for the business to be able to rapidly consume IT services. Um, IT itself is leveraging an enterprise agility framework of some sort. Um, it really helps the company itself to differentiate um, itself via technology between its competitive environment. And also um, the focus is in continuous integration and delivery where applications are rapidly deployed and enabling the company to adopt and ad adapt to rapidly changing markets. So the IT automation conceptual architecture is really pr primarily uh, comprised of three components. The first being the enterprise service automation platform. And in most companies, we see some type of IT service management uh, workflow engine capability. So there are some various products in the marketplace that enable this. And the focus of this technology is to enable business consumers to consume from a catalog of services that can be requested and then IT being the provider of the service. Um, the middle layer of our conceptual architecture is really an IT to IT focus, and that is where IT service automation platforms come into play. Um, this would be primarily focused on the ability to deploy infrastructure in an automated fashion, manage and control that infrastructure as it's in operations 
um, going ongoing. And then lastly, um, another IT to IT service is enabled by device automation. These are, these are the capabilities that are enabled through some type of scripting that enables any device, whether it be virtual or physical, to be remotely deployed and configured via an automation script. The key aspect of our conceptual architecture is API integration between these three key focus areas of automation. The reason why we see this as three separate types of automation is because one area of IT has specialization versus another area. So skill sets are developed in certain technology platforms that would enable that would better enable them to deliver these services at each area, at each level of service. So infrastructure services, the team there has in, in place many different technologies that they leverage for uh, delivering infrastructure. They're not so much familiar with how to configure a workflow platform such as ServiceNow for service automation. So um, each tool has its capabilities that are, are best in class in the marketplace for doing that level, that type of automation. An example of the uh, logical architecture that we're talking about here would be ServiceNow as an enterprise automation platform, and that is what drives um, different things like procurement, project management, change management, asset management, etc. VMware vRealize Automation Platform would enable the infrastructure services automation, and that's what drives uh, the configurations of IP address management, database, for example, containers, firewall configurations, et cetera, all of the infrastructure uh, aspects of your IT environment. And then on the bottom layer there, you see Red Hat Ansible. That is a tool that is used, for example, to deploy and configure network storage, compute, um, and even IoT devices. So a couple key um, aspects that we wanna get across here is automation and orchestration. Um, there's a clear difference between the two. Enterprise service automation is the workflow capability. Service automation is, IT service automation is what enables the infrastructure to be deployed effectively across many different technologies. And then device level automation being um, the scripting capabilities that are used to deploy and configure individual devices. I have some customers tell me that we do automation and they really only do device automation. They haven't yet matured to a level of leveraging their enterprise service capabilities to an end-to-end -end business automation of the deployment and or uh, management of the infrastructure services. So some of the key terms like we've been talking, automation, is the focus of scripting. Orchestration is really the capability, the technology capability that allows, allows you to orchestrate and trigger various automations across multiple technologies. And integration is required to be able to orchestrate the automation. So we think of orchestration as really the automation of automated activities. Um, so now let's talk about the business value of IT automation and some of the approach that we take with our customers. Some of the key business outcomes of IT automation focus first on the ability to improve service availability and reliability of your infrastructure. By eliminating human error um, during the deployment of infrastructure, we, re we increase the reliability of our overall IT operations. The ability to scale up the infrastructure without increasing team size, which in, a, in effect is the ability to shift your labor to higher value tasks by freeing up people from doing menial tasks that can be automated, we now can allow them to focus more on high value tasks for the business. Speed of delivery is really kind of what I call project throughput. It's getting projects done for the business 
in a faster way that allows business to capitalize on its market opportunities. Capturing institutional knowledge through staff changes is an important aspect because IT departments typically depend on the tribal knowledge of their team. And if there are staff changes or turnover, um, you lose that institutional knowledge without automation. Improving the quality of IT business relationships um, through what we call the service broker or operating model. And basically that is IT is so good at delivering infrastructure services that the business relies on IT versus going out to the public cloud for, for services that can be delivered uh, potentially faster. And then the total aspect of automation allows IT to re both reduce IT and business operational costs through the automation of business processes. So we help customers identify where their focus of uh, business outcomes is as it relates to an initiative to automate more of IT. And one of the ways that we do that is we look at their IT to business value maturity model and see where they are along a continuum of three levels of maturity. The first level that we talk about is what we call the technology provider level. Um, this is the basic um, IT organization that may be in the process of modernizing its capabilities, but the focus is really on how can we improve CapEx through the virtualization and software defined data center. By virtualizing the infrastructure, you enable what's called policy driven infrastructure, but you aren't quite at a maturity level that allows you to execute on that concept. That's where the service provider level of maturity comes in. By focusing on the ability to create services that can be automated end to end and self service capability, IT's focus is now on improving cap, uh, OPEX, moving, moving infrastructure, which may at times take months or days down to minutes. By the push of a button, um, the deployment of infrastructure in literally minutes uh, enables the business to move at a much faster pace. At this level, there, the IT organization is, is really mastering orchestration and automation, which we've been talking about thus far in the presentation. The highest level of maturity for an IT organization would be digital, digital enabler, enabler. And at that level is where you fully mastered orchestration automation and you're, you're able to help the business transform itself as necessary as changes happen in the business climate. So that enables business agility and what we call automated operations where you can pre-program the, the actual operational uh, management of the environment in an automated way. That requires a high level of maturity and capability, which is why an, or, an IT organization really can't move from technology provider to digital enabler without first becoming that service provider entity. Um, at the digital enabler level is where we focus on um, ad, agile concepts like DevOps, IT as a service, and at the application layer, they're deploying containers and microservices. So the key thing for an organization to do is to look at this continuum of maturity and figure out where are you today and where should you be based on what your business customer is asking of IT and figure out a plan to get there. The way that we help customers achieve this is through the standardization of automated services. And this kind of shows uh, how most Today, mostly uh, the mostly customized services are being deployed, which means human uh, intervention in the process. So manual work is being done to develop and deploy custom infrastructure. The goal, uh, the goal of automation is really to flip this to where much more of the services are predefined services that are standardized and much less is done on a customized basis. 
This is what enables that shift in labor from low value to high value activity. The, really, the goal should really be 80 to, 80 to 20%. So if we can standardize 80% of all requests for infrastructure through a self-service automation, uh, that's how we can help achieve these, these aspects. The way that we measure this capability and define how to improve over time is we look at the process for what we call provisioning infrastructure. So the, along the bottom are the key activities that most organizations follow. Where a project starts, then documentation is, is developed for requirements. And then at some point, somebody designs the infrastructure needed for that project. And then somebody goes ahead and requests that infrastructure. Um, upon request, then somebody needs to check where, what data center should it go in and what, what kind of capacity do we have to, can we accommodate this new infrastructure that we're going to deploy. Once that's done, then we deploy the infrastructure, management tools, et cetera, and then deploy other add-ons needed onto the infrastructure before a project can actually begin. The projects are typically either the deployment of a, a software application or the development of software applications that move through a typical software development lifecycle. So in this diagram, we show the high level view of the business process that IT organizations follow uh, to deliver the infrastructure as a service. Now, what we do with our customers is we identify what we call total lead time, which is how much time is being, is, is, does it really take to do the work plus how much time is being waited on? for the work to be done. So from one team to the next, typically what happens is a request is submitted to that team to do its portion of the work. And then when they're done, they pass the ball to the next team. And what, what ends up happening is this wait time plus work time is what the customer perceives as the value stream. Um, the technology capabilities that we discussed is what drives blue, what drives the the ability to automate and orchestrate, and that's done through what we call the blueprint. Um, on the upper left, you can see where there would be a service catalog in your IT service automation platform um, with various integrations and capabilities, graphical user interfaces, etc. cetera. Um, one of the key aspects of that is the service ability to cost out the service and provide a per price per use, which um, is, a measure of an increasing maturity around how you deliver IT services. The orchestration piece, again, just to reiterate, is what's orchestrating across those three types of automation, service automation, infrastructure, and then device level automation. All three being necessary, but all three being coordinated and orchestrated through the blueprint process. One of the things we do for our customers is what we call lean value analysis. So we look at that wait time and that work time as we identify what part of the business process delivers value and what part doesn't. So the lean value analysis is what focuses on identifying activities that do add value versus those that don't and figuring out for the customer how we should redesign or, or eliminate certain tasks altogether. This is an important step in the process of def defining what can be automated and what can't be, um, because you don't want to automate an inefficient process. So one of the things that a lean value analysis provides is target metrics. So if we identify today what, how long it takes, and in this customer example, the deployment of infrastructure was taking 16 days, a um, little over 16 days, and through automation, we were able to drive that down to a five-day window. That's a 65% improvement from just a process improvement perspective. Um, but if we look at the labor cost to deliver that service, it would go from a, a little over $1,000 to deploy a, a virtual machine. Through automation, would bring that cost down to less than $100. So significant financial improvement could be made through automation. One of the other metrics that can be driven is the number of servers managed by engineers today. 
the, if the goal is scalability, we want the same four people to be able to manage 4,000 servers in the future after automation is built and, and, and implemented in your environment. Here's an example analysis of a lean value analysis uh, that we did for a customer. And essentially along the left-hand side of this screen, you see the different major process steps. So requesting for design, um, the actual design activity, request to deploy servers, approval and validation, and then how do we, where do we place, and then the VM build process, which is uh, the set of steps that are used to deploy, and then post provisioning activities. And you can see here on this example, on the left-hand side under current state process, the current work time is a total of 14.75 hours that is used to perform all those tasks together. The wait time added to that brings us to 129 hours, which if you take business hours of eight hour business uh, days, um, it translates to 16 business days. If we were to automate some or all of those steps, you can see we define what activities can be fully automated 100% and which ones can't be fully automated. Um, that's how we can drive that time down to less than six uh, average business days for deployment. So, um, and again, the example at the bottom there of financial Im improvements that can be made through the uh, using an average hourly rate. This particular customer was deploying 30 on average 30 VMs requested on a monthly basis. Um, so that gives you an idea of the results of a lean value analysis and how that can be translated into clear business goals for how can we improve IT. One of the aspects of how we do that is we define a business, a service catalog up front, which in this example shows various Windows server offerings that would be from a small, medium, and large size or four different types of Windows offerings. So in essence, in this service catalog, there would be 12 buttons to push. Uh, if you need a server 2012 R2 version with eight gig uh, or eight CPUs and 16 gigs, et cetera, you would push that button off that service catalog item and it would automatically deploy that server infrastructure for you. Um, so th this just gives you a visual example of how we would do that. Now, a lean value analysis workshop, um, we've done these from anywhere from two to four hours of period of time uh, that would pull together the infrastructure team in general, people from network, uh, security, server, virtualization team, have a working session with them where we discuss the people, the process, and the technology. We walk through the current state provisioning process and we look at wait time and work time. And that's what enables us to provide the customer output such as time savings, labor cost savings, what kind of consistency can be delivered from standardization and automation. And then where are, the, where are your potential gaps? Where, where might you need more modernization, for example, before you can complete automation capability? Um, proposing recommendations, um, and even how we can help you through that journey of automation. Uh, on the right hand side here is the team that typically we would need uh, involved in a lean value analysis workshop that gives us the ability to kind of interact with those folks and um, ensure that we gather all the right information about how your organization delivers the services today. So in summary, we talked a little bit about the Advisex approach to IT automation, the conceptual architecture for IT automation, and then methods that we use to drive business value from IT automation, leveraging what we call lean value analysis. I wanna thank you for your time today and feel free to reach out with any questions.